Hello, this is Tom Brown from the Fired Steel Forge. Uh, welcome back. I know it's been a long time since I did a video, but life is what it is. So um, today we're gonna finally do a little bit of carving on antler in the Sami style. So let's get to it. All right, today we're going to do a few lines on this antler wedding band. Uh, this is reindeer antler. It's a, it was a good density and we'll show you what it looks like when it's, when it's done here. Let's see if I can maybe focus that in a little bit better for you guys. So we finished the antler up to 800 grit. Uh, this one is actually up to 2000 grit. This one is finished. But this one here is the one that we're going to start on today. So these are just penciled in lines. Try to get the, the ends of the lines. And I kind of hold it up like this to the edges and look at both sides at the same time and try to you know, see if we're level there. And again, this is just penciled on there, so you have to kind of be careful of how you hold it so that you don't rub the pencil lines off. Or you can also use a product called Fixitant. Or fix, fix it, fix tiff. There you go. Workable fix tiff. Um, it's just a like a spray coating, and again, you know, protects pencil lines and everything. You have to let it dry a little bit first, but it's not not too bad to carve through. So we'll go into a couple of the techniques of doing the carving on antler instead of wood. Alright, so on normal coal rosing, and normally coal rosing we're using a pretty pretty wide, um, wide beveled blade, and it's usually a single cut. basically just running a single line and then it's we're putting our pigment in there and then burnishing the fibers back together such as in the last video but on an antler or some other harder material I've done this in plastics and such too Sorry, I'm having a bit of a difficulty with my camera here today. Um, we need to plow the line in both directions. So I'll just do a little, kind of a little S shape here. And the, the two blades I use for antler carving, one is this one here, single beveled, like a chisel. And then this one also, which is a dual bevel. This is probably my primary knife for doing fine coal rosing in wood and uh, and the carving in the antler. But the single line has its place, uh, you know, if you think of it uh, like if you're doing up against edges or something, 
like triangles and such like that, uh, you'll want that flat bevel on the one side. So here we're, we're just going to, if we can see this in here. I'm not going straight in. I have to lay the lay the knife over uh, maybe about a 25 to 30 degree angle and again you steer steer the knife and then you push the knife with your thumb so we're pushing Let's see if we can get in here a little better so you guys can see this. And then we'll have to come back the other way and cut the same line. Make sure you start at the beginning and the end. And you should be able to peel out. A shaving just like on wood I don't know if you can see that They're like little shavings on wood almost like when you plain wood or if you're uh, doing chip carving how you can peel out um, you know like a, like a little not a burr but a like a like a spill, I believe. Yeah, I think they call them spills. And then the same thing, you know, our little line. Just push the knife a little bit. Come back the other way. Get right on the other side of the line, and pull out that spill. After this, let's see. I'm having such a hard time with the camera today, huh? I'm not sure what's going on here. After this, we're going to use uh, just a, in, a black India ink. As long as it's waterproof, that's pretty much all we're looking for. I mean there's all kinds of different you know flatness and glossiness and all kinds of different colors and different things that you can use. Uh, and then there's also the the traditional uh, Sami pigments where you um, take like the the inner bark of an alder or silver birch tree and scrape it to a fine powder, rub it uh, uh, and boil it down to uh, to a paste and then you rub that in there and that's more of like a burnt umber kind of a golden burnt umber color um, you can also use acrylics but they take a long time to dry but they do fill in uh, the gap a little bit uh, the groove a little bit better so here we can just take a little little paintbrush and dab on a little ink wipe my brush off off camera here and you can either wipe this off right away Now you can use charcoal powder also for this and just rub charcoal powder in. Uh, traditionally sometimes they even use uh, charcoal powder in a little spit uh, to make a, make a little paste. But So you can just wipe this off uh, just like you would almost do in scrimshaw. 
and this is really a form of scrimshaw. It's just you know we're, it's a different culture, and we're we're a little different techniques. Where scrimshaw is more just scratching in lines, and here we're we're actually cutting, we're plowing the lines. I've got some 800 grit sandpaper here, and we can just sand that. You can tell I, I didn't prep this this antler very good. This is just a piece I had laying around, so the, the ink is falling into the other rougher scratch lines also. But here we can tell you And that's basically all you need to do um, to carve an antler and plastics and whatnot. And after that dries, you can polish it up and do different things. You can put a sealer on it if you want to, but I, I mean, it stays in there pretty well. I've done uh, different knife handles and stuff that have been, you know. Quite a few years old now and they're still holding up just fine. Haven't had to recolor them or repigment them. And it just kind of depends on your imagination after that. The thing you really want to be concerned with is no matter how narrow or fine of line you put on the on the piece to begin with, uh, such as this. This is a uh, point, uh, point 0.3 pencil, and I sharpened the lead to a point to, uh, just on a piece of paper. You know, just kind of rub it back and forth on a piece of paper until it sharpens it to a point. But it doesn't matter if your line is really fat. Um, you know, let's say here. Let's see. You know, let's say your your line is that fat. Can we see in there? Or if it's really, really narrow where you can just barely see it, there's still two sides of that line. Let, let's say this this whole piece here is is one line. You know, put a big thick, you know, like a big sharpie. This is as wide as a sharpie. Well, you want to make sure that you're cutting from the edge, you know, you'll have to probably taper, make sure your tip gets all the way down to the middle, and cut, and then come back and cut the other side. What you don't want is to, like, cut in the middle here, and jaggedy, and then go over here, maybe over here, and start here, and then go out to the outside. Uh, your lines are going to be really jaggedy, they're going to be, um, you know, they're not going to be straight. And a lot of the Sami patterns are geometrical style patterns, a lot of straight lines. So you want to be really precise, and then also where you start and stop the knife. You know, you don't want to start down here if the line starts here. So just be concerned with things like that. Alright, now uh, we'll do a couple lines on this little ring here. Alright, so we're just going to start here on this line. Just gonna push and push.
Now I'm going to come back and do those same lines on focus. Again, we're just peeling out that spill. Didn't quite go deep enough right there. That one is hanging up just a hair, so we have to come back in from the other side and just pop it up from the other side. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, guys. Oh, so you can see any better there, maybe that will help. Both of our outside lines done. I see them right there. Oop, get back in the camera there. See right there. Right here. And you can keep coloring these with your pigment. Um, if it's if it's acrylic, uh, you want to probably carve the whole thing at once. Uh, before you put the pigment in, but if it's ink, um, or even if you have kind of a little bit dirty fingers or something, um, or if you have just a little bit of um, you know, ash or charcoal or something, you can just kind of rub it around there, and then you can see your lines, make sure that they're exactly where you want them to be, if they're defined or not, if they're a little too short, you know, you can go back and lengthen the line just a little bit if you need to. And you just keep going back and forth and back and forth and till the whole thing is done. You can see where I didn't use the fixative and now my design in the middle is, is gone because I uh, the oils in my skin kind of rubbed that off. Uh, so that's what happens sometimes. I can you can't really see it in the camera, but I can still see the faint lines on it. So I'll go ahead and redraw those. And then finish it up. But again, this is the techniques that you use. It's pretty simple. You just want to be accurate. And you want to make sure that your knife is really sharp. Uh, I normally sharpen most of my knives on a thousand grit. Uh, whetstones. Uh, uh, Japanese water stones, anything like that, you know, you want to be about a thousand grit or higher with a nice polished edge. I do strop them um, just like you would a regular woodworking tool because if you don't have a sharp knife, your knife can, it, it can slip and then, or jump, and then your design is going to be really 
uh, really bad because a scratch and a really polished surface such as antler you're either going to have to sand that out and then you might have a low spot in the antler if you just try to sand that one spot or you'll have to sand down the whole piece and start over or you need to try to figure out a way to incorporate that scratch into your design those are really about your only three options so you want a really really sharp knife it when you put it on the antler it should just like stick it should feel like it's sticking on the antler it's not wanting to slide uh, same kind on your fingernail if you just put it on your fingernail it should like stick to your fingernail if it slides at all it's not sharp enough so I'm going to finish up this off camera because it's going to take me a little while to do the really fine cuts but again this is what we're going to try to end up with here and these super tiny lines on the snowflake here are no different than what I was already doing you just have to take a little bit more time um, get a magnifying lens or something that luckily I'm, I'm nearsighted so I just take my glasses off uh, but if they're really small uh, sometimes I do have a set of these let me I got these from my my eye doctor actually but I think you can probably order them online and whatnot uh, these are pretty expensive ones they're Eisenbach and they're like a loop a loop system almost like jewelers use um, dentists also use uh, a style something like this that actually have lights on on the front which is I might look into something like that sometime too and these just clip on these just clip on my glasses since I have prescription glasses but you can do something like that for really really tiny lines that way your hands are still free the uh, you can use a microscope if you have a big enough big enough uh, lens on the microscope or uh, this light right here that I have here this has a magnifying glass built into it and maybe you might like that I personally don't really like it one of the things that's really nice is if you can carve outside on a cloudy day you'll have perfect diffused light and that will be about the easiest way for anyone to see their lines um, my eye doctor said that if you have perfectly diffused light most people can see small things better that way so this line this light here as you can probably see in the in the camera it it leaves a pretty bad shadow and glares sometimes so it's it's a little hard to film uh, under the light here at the bench but I hope this helps you guys if you have questions make sure you leave a comment and uh, some questions down below if there's anything that you couldn't quite see and I can uh, try to make another video to explain uh, or you know uh, maybe get it in the frame a little bit better or a little tighter zoom or or something uh, uh, if you want to go over sharpening we can do something like that uh, just leave it in the comment so I hope this uh, hope this helps and uh, and we'll Catch you again sometime. So yeah, this has been Tom at the Fired Steel Forge. We'll catch you later. Have a good one, guys.